weeks ago, I was following along while they were reading the Torah in shul, and it was Parashat Vayeshev, and I had a question on the beginning of the parasha, so let me share it with you. The parasha starts off, Ele toldot Yaakov, Yosef ben Shiva Asre Shana, Hayar O'et Echav Ason, Vihu Na'ar Et Bnei Bilhav Et Bnei Zilpan Eshe Aviv. Says these are the chronicles of Yaakov. Yosef was 17 years old. He was a shepherd in the field with his, with his brothers, and he was a lad. The pasuk says lad for the word na'ar. So my question is, does na'ar actually mean lad or boy? So if I were to ask any random person on the street, what do they think na'ar means? Most people would say that it means somebody like a teenage boy. That's what a na'ar means. But what I want to do with you guys today is I want to figure out what the word na'ar actually means. Pashup shot, we can't really figure out what it means. We assume it means a teenage boy, but we don't really know what it means. So in order to figure out what the word na'ar means, we have to go around the Torah and find the other places that it says na'ar and use those places, those con contexts where it says na'ar, to figure out what the word na'ar na na actually means. So we're going to start off by going through the Torah. And um, one other time it says the word na'ar is at Akadat Yitzchak. When Yosef, when Yaak, sorry, when Yitzchak is being brought as a sacrifice by Abraham, it calls Yitzchak a na'ar there. Now we know that Yitzchak over there was 37 years old because... Sarah died at 127, and she gave birth to Yaakov at 90, and she died right after Akedah, so that makes him 37. So we know that Yaakov was, that Yitzchak was 37 there, right? So now we have Yosef was 17, Yitzchak was 37. Okay, let's see where else, what other ages people are to figure out what Na'ar means. When Moshe was in Parashat Shemot, when Moshe was in the basket, Miriam put him in the basket on the river, it says that Moshe was a Na'ar there also, it calls him a Na'ar. In the Pasuks before that, it says he was three months old, when he was put into the into the river. So that makes Na'ar mean somebody who's three months old, somebody who's 17 years old, somebody who's 37 years old. Continuing on, regarding Ishmael, when he was kicked out of Abraham's house, it calls him a Na'ar there also. And there he's about nine or ten years old. Another place it says it, by Binyamin, when Yehuda is fighting for Binyamin, when Yosef accuses him of stealing the golden goblet, ya uh, Yehuda starts arguing for Binyamin's case, and he calls him a Na'ar there also. So, it doesn't say in the Pasuk exactly how old Binyamin was there, but we can assume that he's somewhere in his high 20s, early 30s. Later on, it says by Yehoshua, that Yehoshua was a Na'ar. When he was standing outside of Moshe's tent, it calls him a Na'ar later on in Sefer Shemot. So, how old is he there? It's the first year the Jews left Mitzrayim, right? And in, in Sefer Yehoshua, Yehoshua says that he was 40 when he was sent as a spy. So that means at this time when he just left the Midbar, he was 40. So here when he's a Na'ar, he's called 40. Also in Shemuel Aleph, when Shemuel is given over to Eli HaKohen, he's called a Na'ar there also. Through the Pasuk, we figure out that, and according to Rashi, Rashi says that he's two years old there. So we have the word Na'ar meaning somebody who's three months, two years, nine or ten years, 17 years, twenty high 20s, early 30s, 37, 40, and last but not least, in, in Sefer Yeshayahu, it says, call somebody who's 100 years old a Na'ar. So we have from 3 months old to 100 years old a Na'ar. So obviously a Na'ar isn't referring to an age frame because 3 months old to 100 years old is a, an extremely wide age, age frame that we wouldn't name somebody who's a Na'ar. So then if it can't be an age or an age frame, then what could Na'ar mean? So I'd like to give um, my own interpretation of what I think Na'ar could mean. And in order to do that, you have to look back at each of the texts and figure out what's so special about each of those texts, what's similar between all of them that use, that makes them use the word na'ar. Why would I use the na'ar in each of these texts? What's so similar about them? And once we figure out what the similarity is between all these texts, we can figure out why it means na'ar, why it uses the word na'ar there. So going back to Yosef's, um, when he gets sold, right, in the beginning of Peshat Yeshev, as I read in the beginning, um, Yosef, at what point is he in his life? He is the favorite son of Yaakov. Um, he, his brothers hate him, and he gets sold as a slave, right? So he goes from being one of the brothers, his father's favorite, to being a slave. Right? He's, he goes through a big turning point in his life there, right? He goes through a huge transition. He's, he's going from one thing to another thing. He's changing, right? So I like to offer that perhaps when it says the word na'ar, it's referring to a transformation, a, a turning point, or a, trans, uh, or a transformation in somebody's life. All right, so let's see if it works in other places. So let's go to um, to Yitzchak at Akeda. Right, Yitzchak was 37 years old. He was Abraham's son. 
But at that point, it was Abraham's 10th test. So Abraham didn't really have the legacy of the, of the Jews yet. Once he passed his 10th test, Yitzchak, then he got it. So at this point, it's the same for Yitzchak. According to the Mefarshim on the Pasuk, it says that Yitzchak is not only a test for Abraham, it was a test for Yitzchak to see if Yitzchak could be a good t- to take over for Abraham if he, was, if he was able to, if he was worthy enough. And so Yitzchak at Akedah, he willingly accepted that he was going to die for Hashem. At that point, he changed. He was able to become the next leader of the Jewish nation, of the monotheistic religion. And so at that point, it's a huge turning point in Yitzchak's life. He's going from being just the son of Abraham, a regular guy. He believed in monotheism to being the next the next um, leader of the of the Jewish people. When it goes to Moshe, when Moshe was in the basket, right? He was a Jewish boy, no other Jewish boy, just a regular old little bo- little baby, right? He gets found by Batya daughter of Paro, and she takes him into, into her house. So at that point, Moshe is going through a huge transition in his life. He's starting. He's going from being a Jewish boy to a Mitzri, who will eventually take out the Jewish people and save everybody, right? That, that's, that's the turning point in Moshe's life. If that didn't happen, nothing else would have happened. The Jews would have still been in Egypt. That's the turning point. That's the transformation in Moshe that made who he is be who he is. It's because of that moment. That was his transformation. We go on again to, um, to Yishmael. When he was hiding, when he was kicked out of Abraham's house, it says in the pasuk that he was a naar, right? He going from being Abraham's son in Abraham's house. Then right after that, it goes and says how Hashem is beginning to make Ishmael into a great nation and starts and starts making sure he gets he's good with the arch, archery and he starts becoming able to run his own nation. So that point when he gets kicked out of Abraham's house and it calls him a naar is a turning point, it's a transformation in his life when he goes from being the son of Abraham to being the next leader of, the, of a great nation, all right? Next time it says Na'ar by Benjamin. Um, Benjamin, when he gets gets bashed for by Yehuda, Benjamin is going from being just any old brother. At that point, the brothers weren't exactly worthy of being the twelve tribes and the leaders of of the generations of Israel. So at that point, the the test that Yosef gives the brothers is to save Benjamin. And once they do, once Yehuda stands up for him and Yosef reveals himself. Then Hashem says that, okay, you guys are worthy. You guys are going to be the next generations, and you guys are going to start the Bnei Israel. And so at that point, for Benjamin, he was the youngest brother with Yosef. He didn't. He wasn't part. He wasn't. He didn't need to get tested. But at that point, is when he got changed because of him. He went from being this guy who was accused of being of stealing a golden goblet, getting thrown in jail, to being the neck, to being the head of a tribe. He's going from being low all the way to high. Benjamin's going through a huge transformation, right? Shmuel, he's going from being a two-year-old boy to being the next prophet of Hashem when he gets given over to Eli. He's going through a huge turning point in his life. And we see the similarities in each of these cases is that each of them is going through a turning point. Every single time it says Na'ar, it's referring to a time when somebody's going through a turning point and it's transforming their life to something else. So now how could we take that into our own lives, right? Well, we see that our greatest ancestors had times in their lives when they were faced with a choice, or even not a choice, where they were faced with something that caused their life to change for the better. Now, I know myself personally, and I'm sure a lot of people are always faced with certain things that could change them. And they're always saying, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I like who I am. I, I, I don't want to change. I, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I don't want to go to Shachar. I'm, I, like, I like the what I do. I don't need to change. But the Torah is telling us that, no, you could be a Nahar. Every single one of us has the ability to be a Na'ar, and you should be a Na'ar. Look at all of our greatest ancestors, the leaders of the Jewish people, people who started the Jewish people. They had all transformations to be who they were. They became great through that transformation. Without the Na'ar, we wouldn't be here today. Without Na'ar, they wouldn't have been who they were. We could still be Na'ars. Every single one of us could be a Na'ar. That's what I believe that the word Na'ar is coming to teach us in the Torah, in the Torah, that we all have the potential to change for the better. We could all be great people. If we only accept being a Na'ar, we could do it. We could become the next leaders of the Jewish people. Just like Moshe, um, like Yitzchak, like Yaakov, like Yosef, everybody. We could become great people if we decide to become Na'ars. And we don't back away every time some change is introduced into our life. If we accept it and we want to become Na'ars, then we can be the great leaders. And this works well. And with, with what it says in Yishayahu, Yishayahu, it says that even somebody who's 100 years old could be a Na'ar. It doesn't matter when you change. If you think that you're 40 years old and you can't change, look at Yoshua. He was 40 when he became a Na'ar. When he went through that transformation, he was 40 years old. When you're 100 years old, like it says in Yeshayahu, you could become a Na'ar. It's never too late to make a change to your life and to become for the better. When you become a Na'ar, 
you could become the next leader of the Jewish nation. Don't think that it's not you, it's not you, it's not you. It could be you. It could be any of us. Any of us, every single one of us, in fact, can be not ours. And if we're all not ours, then the Jewish people will thrive so much more because the Torah is teaching us when it says the word Na'ar, that we can change for the better.